Okay, so in this video, I want to answer the question, do I have to be good at math in order to become an engineer? Whether it's civil engineer, mechanical, environmental, any type of engineer, do I have to be good at math in order to pursue this career? So I want to cover this topic because normally when you think of an engineer, you probably think that they're pretty smart or that they have to be good at math. You know, they're designing some buildings, so they have to have or memorize all these formulas and you've seen all these formulas around. And they have like big books dedicated just to solving these types of problems. So like if you're building some building, you get to know like the air resistance or some heat transfer or something like that. All of that requires many formulas and complicated analyses. And really it just looks really complicated. So you're probably thinking, wow, I suck at math. I don't really want to think about that. That looks way too complicated for my mind to even think about. So maybe I'm not set up for this career. And so that brings up to the question, do I have to be good at math? The short answer, no, you don't have to be good at math. But there are some caveats to that. So just keep watching the video and then you'll hear my point of view. All right, so before I begin and delve deeper into this question, let's start off with the types of math. You had things like algebra, geometry, trigonometry, pre-calculus, calculus, and things like calculus would involve like derivatives, integrals, maybe eventually you'll reach like linear algebra. Eventually you'll have to learn things like heat transfer and fluid mechanics, all these things, and so there's lots of numbers, lots of big fancy formulas, and eventually all that stuff is pretty overwhelming, and it, it all involves math. So all those levels of math that I just mentioned, those are all taught at school. It went from like applicable adding and subtracting to eventually some derivatives and integrals that you don't really use too much, and eventually some ambiguous things like concepts and theories that for the most part you will never ever use in practical future jobs. So that's why I say you don't really have to be good at math because all that ambiguous stuff, the theories and stuff, you'll never touch on ever again once you leave school. And so why I say no, you don't have to be good at math is because so pretty much once you start learning the basics of just like adding, subtracting, those are pretty much all you need. That's the really the only relevant applicable thing that you'd use for a future career. Again, whether it's in like civil, environmental, mechanical, you're not going to be using like theories and other things like that. You're really just going to be like adding, subtracting to a few things. You might measure like the volume, the flow rate and so on. But all these things, all these big things that you have to know, there are already programs that simplify this for you. So maybe all you have to do is like get a measuring tape, for example, measure some pipe. And then once you had that, the length of the pipe, then you just type it into this little program that your work probably offers you. And then you get the flow rate. It's that simple. So for the most part, you do have to be good at math just in order to survive what school makes you and forces you to learn. Calculus, for example. You'll have to learn things like derivatives and integrals, maybe during high school or college. But practically speaking, you're never going to be using that once you're at the job. So all that was pretty much theory. If, for example, you're a civil engineer or a mechanical engineer, you might, again, have to measure the flow rate. Once you get that measurement, they already have the formula set in place for you and some computer software. You never have to go out and like pull up a big book or a binder or a formula sheet and then manually punch it in your calculator and get this and then do with all this other stuff that you might have had to do on a test. All that is just for school purposes. So for school, they just want you to learn the concept, but in real life, they just want the job done. So once you get the measurement for that pipe, you're done pretty much. You don't have to explain to your boss, oh, I did this formula and so on and so on. This is how I got this result. And you can see my steps and you know how I solved the math problem. They don't care about that at all. They just want to know what was the measurement, what's the flow rate, good, let's get it done, move on. So for the most part, I feel that school does waste your time in terms of having to learn the whole concept from scratch. I know it's good to learn where it came from and I don't want to disqualify or like demean any the person who pretty much invented the formula. For the most part, it's just not relevant to us future engineers who want to just get the job done. Like We don't have to understand the process of how it became or the origin of it. We just have to get the result of it. Again, I'm not trying to back down on anyone who invented the formula or you know invented this new idea or concept. It's just not really, for our purposes, it's not needed. So that might be good news for some people out there who are just struggling with math. So I know that I said, no, you don't have to be good at math in order to you know, do well in engineering, but you do have to, one, pass the school requirements in order to you know, pass and graduate with a college degree of engineering. You only have to be good at math pretty much just for academic purposes. 
But that being said though, you still need to have some critical math skills. And what I mean by critical and sort of creative math skills, for example, let's say you're at a party. So you get invited to some Christmas party. And at the Christmas party, they give you like a jar and they say, guess how many jelly beans are in this jar? So this is where your creative engineering math skills can come in handy. So let's say you have a jar and you, you know the volume of a cylinder right off the top of your head. And so you look at this jar and then you see, oh, it's this high and it's this wide. And so you measured the volume of that jar. Let's say that jar was completely filled with jelly beans. And so you eyeball the jar, you look at that, you measured the volume of the jar. I know this is sort of going overboard just to prove that you're right in terms of guessing how many jelly beans you have, but let's say you want to show off. So you eyeball the jar and you eyeball the jelly bean size. And let's say, for example, you can stack up 10 jelly beans until it reaches the top of the jar. And you looked at it, and then you looked at the bottom of the jar, and you noticed 10 jelly beans scattered at the bottom. So that means you had 10 jelly beans at the bottom, 10 jelly beans on top of that, 10 jelly beans on top of that. And so that means you're able to determine that there's 100 jelly beans into the jar. And so again, I know this is going overboard, but that was pretty much like a random life skill that you had that you were able to pull off the top of your head because you were just, you know, pretty adept with math. So you're not going to be using that jelly bean situation at your work, but that sort of creativity is what you sort of need in order to become a successful engineer. So again, no, you don't have to be good at math, but you still do have to keep it in the back of your mind and be sort of creative when you go throughout your day. No, you will not be using every single math class that you took during college at your work. No, everything is not applicable. Yes, you do have to endure just that math class for the time being, just to pass your class, just to pass that prerequisite in order to eventually graduate with an engineering degree. I don't think I've seen any engineer who has to keep using every single math class that they used or that they learned at university at their current position. Even for me personally, I don't use any of my linear algebra or derivatives or integrals or differential equations that I learned at school at my work. It's really just dealing with people. And if I ever have to do any sort of math, it's really just measuring something and then there's a program that just, you know, spits up the number and gives me what I want. I don't need to do anything besides just one little simple measurement. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys out. I don't want you guys to be fearful of determining and pursuing this route because, you know, maybe you're not good at something. I do want you to try, I do want you to be creative, but, you know, some skills that you may have, sometimes you don't even need it. And maybe you're not good at it, but again, they don't need it. So you can still try it out on this engineering route if you want to. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.